My name is Kat Hadley. I'm from Ann Arbor, Michigan. I'm a mom of two. I have a three and a five-year-old with my husband. And I got pregnant when I was 19. It was 2007. And I'm 33 now. Um, and at the time, I was planning on getting an abortion when I found out. Um, and I found out just a little too late. Um, when I when I was younger, I worked as a barista. I was a high school dropout. I didn't have insurance. Um, I didn't have a car or a way to really get to birth control or even regular doctor's visits. My, my health insurance really got cut off when I was about 14 years old. Um, so for a long time in my life, medical care, medical understanding was just something that I didn't really have access to. Um, and so I didn't know fully the signs of being pregnant. Um, I had some spotting, so I thought I was like maybe just stressed out, um, and wasn't having a full period, but I certainly didn't think I was pregnant. Um, and it was a shock to me, really. I think I ran into a lot of people that assumed like, oh, you had to know on some level that you were, but I true, I truly didn't at that age. Um, and I was very disconnected from my body at that time. When I found out I was pregnant, I had gone to the ER because I thought that there was something really wrong with me because I lived for so long without insurance. The only reason I would ever go to see a doctor was really through the emergency room. Um, and I, so I obviously very rarely went cause it would be massively expensive. Um, and I was 18. I didn't know how things worked. Um, and so I was feeling sick all the time. I had like, you know, my stomach was feeling weird. I didn't know what was going on. I thought that I was just very ill. Um, so I went in and the woman at the desk even looked at me and said, Oh, you, are you pregnant? And I, I said, no, that can't be it. Um, and so we found out that I was, you know, cause she just said these symptoms line up with, with pregnancy. And I said, no, that I've had a little bit of spotting. I don't think it could be that. And so we found out there in the, oh, it, was, it was an urgent care. So, so we, we, we did the test in the urgent care and, um, or they did the blood panel and it came back and I was pregnant. I was with my friends because I didn't have a car and public transportation in Ann Arbor, even though it's a wonderful city was really awful back then. Um, and it's a little better now, but not great. Um, but so, yeah, I, um, immediately was like, I gotta go get an abortion. Um, it was not a question. It wasn't like, oh, maybe this will be the, you know, maybe I'll raise this baby or give this baby up. Um, I have, you know, I knew that I was 18. I was working minimum wage. I barely had my life together, you know, um, and I knew that I couldn't take on that responsibility. So, um, I think we found out on like a Friday or some, something like later in the day. So I, I called Planned Parenthood and I said, you know, I want to come in for this procedure. And they were like, oh, in Michigan at that time, you had to wait, you had to do the ultrasound and then wait 24 hours. So I could go in that Monday for the ultrasound um, and then do it on the Tuesday. So when I went in, by the time that I got in, um, it was just, just barely over. And they're like, we just can't, we just can't do this. You know, it's just too late to have an abortion. And that, that I think was the moment for me that I really like my world came crashing down because I knew that I knew that, that there's no, there would be no really positive outcome in this. Like that, that, that I didn't want to carry this baby to term, um, you know, and I had a lot of self hate involved in those feelings because, you know, you'll have people around you that tell you, this child. And I can now look back and see, oh, I was a child, but the time you're 18, you feel like you're an adult and you should, you should have your life together and you should have known. And, you know, adults around me were telling me, oh, well, you had to have known you were pregnant and you probably secretly wanted this. Lots of those comments where I can guarantee you, I didn't. Um, and still to this day, I, I find them baffling. Um, but yeah, so I, um, yeah. So I, I found out and I, I was really numb for a long time. You know, I thought about it ending my life a lot. Um, 
you know, I was really ashamed on so many levels, you know, I did not grow up like wanting to be a mother. Like it wasn't, I was not like, you know, anything And the guy that I got pregnant with was a little bit older. And like, you know, at the time, if, you know, it's like, you're, you're 18 and this guy is older and you feel so sophisticated because he's interested in you and it must be because you're so mature. And then like, I look back as an adult and it's like, Oh no. <laughs> um, but you don't know that, you know? Um, and I think that too, a big thing for me was it took me over a decade, maybe even longer to start to see that what happened to me in, in, when I got pregnant and all these things were, there were so many things that had to fail in the society around me and so many policies that had to fail that got me to that place. And it's not that I had no responsibility within that, but we also have to look at the fact that without good public transit, without safe access to birth control, you know, this is, this is like flip phone era. This is not like now and like, you know, pregnancy still happens now like this, I'm sure, but like getting, getting birth control in the mail was not something that I knew was available to me or was available at that time. Um, and there was no sustainability, you know, like my, my life was just chaos and it was moving from place to place and not having any money and not having insurance. And all of these things had to happen to get me where I was. Um, and I took the full responsibility for everything on me for 10 years. And, and really for, it took me a decade to recover from everything. Um, you know, it was physically and mentally and spiritually awful. And I think that a lot of times in the conversation around abortion, the, you know, like even we had a Supreme court justice, it's like, you just give the baby up. It's not that simple. It's never been that simple and it never will be. And it's not necessarily because you have a maternal pull either, because I never did, but society will tell you, you know, I mean, well, let me word it like this. I, re I think the gift of this experience is that I realized that as a woman very early on that, that there's no winning, right? Like, cause if I have an abortion, then I'm a monster. If I give the baby up, I'm a monster. If I keep the baby, I'm a monster, you know? And then if you have a baby later on in life, what I realized is like, if you breastfeed, then you're this, if you don't breastfeed, then you're this, you know, and it's, it, there's, you know, you just kind of have to go through life, but when you're 18 and impressionable, what people think of you is a really big deal. And you base so much of your life in that. And so I think the gift that I got from this was, was realizing that from an early age. So when I was in the clinic and they had told me, you know, it's, it's too late. I mean, at first they, they had a few people look right. Cause that was just due diligence, you know? Um, but it became more and more clear to me and to them, like, you know, this is just too far along. Um, at the time I was like, I think entering or over the second trimester. Um, and I know that some of the laws have changed over time. Um, but, um, yeah, I, I think that, you know, they were very sympathetic. Um, they immediately tried to get me connected to prenatal care. Um, Planned Parenthood has prenatal care, which a lot of people don't know, but they have excellent midwives there. So talking to me about all these things, I mean, the other thing too, is that I, you know, I had never considered giving birth. I'd never been around birth. Like I was an only child. So like I, I had, it was just a completely different world, you know, and I didn't know things like to take a prenatal vitamin or, you know, uh, to avoid certain foods or anything like that. Um, so I just remember feeling like it was a lot of information coming at me and, you know, they were as sympathetic as they could be, but, uh, you know, it was just completely overwhelming because you go from, okay, I'm going to, you know, this is, I'm going to get an abortion and, and go about my life and hopefully get connected to birth control to, I, ha I'm, I'm going to give birth, you know, I'm going to be pregnant and going to have to go through this experience no matter what, because you go through the experience, you know, I mean, giving birth is, not optional at that point, you know, and that was, that horrified me, you know, I had not ever in my life gotten, um, I even think I'd never even broken a bone, you know, so it was like giving birth. And, and I think even now too, like in media, there's more of it, but it was so foreign to me. I just was, I was horrified. Um, and 
yeah, I think, uh, you know, that moment in there was, you know, it's like my, my world shrunk down and it became, okay, there's, you know, it went from lots of options to there's, there's really only two options. And so what, what, what will we take and what's good to do? And, and I will say that immediately my choice was to give the baby up for adoption. It was not ever for me, um, a consideration of, okay, we'll, we'll take this baby and raise it. I just, I knew, um, for whatever 18 year old reason, which I'm grateful for that I, you know, couldn't do it. Um, and then, you know, the thing that they don't tell you a lot is that there's pressure to keep the baby. Um, and sometimes that pressure comes from the only people willing to talk to you because I just remember feeling like just no one in my world wanted to talk to me, you know, was, it was not socially acceptable. You know, it was either the people that would say that I chose this and I wanted this or, uh, you know, um, folks that just didn't want to talk to me at all. So, yeah. So I, I immediately told my parents, um, and the reaction was awful. Um, it was very hostile, um, very, um, very much so like this was intentional. This is an attention thing, you know, um, lots of anger and like kind of shutting down and, uh, displeased. <laughs> they were not happy. Uh, and neither was I, you know, I don't think anybody was thrilled about the situation. So, you know, um, I told some of my close friends at first, um, before I really started showing and you could tell I was pregnant. Um, and I, you know, I tried to keep it as contained as possible. Um, because, you know, at the time I did plan on, on, on giving it up for adoption. And so, you know, it was the, you know, I felt like the right thing to do to not be super open about it. And, you know, I didn't come from money, you know, some, I think some folks that do this process maybe can go away for a few months and then come back to reality. I had to continue to work. Um, so, you know, there were a lot of pressures from, you know, I, I was working as a barista. I think I worked a shift the day I went into labor. Um, and like, I, yeah, so I worked, I worked through the whole thing. Um, and so you get a lot of very personal questions during that. Um, and during that time, you know, I just completely dissociated from my body. Like I, I remember it's like almost sitting down to remember what happened. I, I had to really think because there was so much, I think I just blocked out, but, um, you know, I was so depressed. I, again, like, you know, it was, I was angry at my body for, for being pregnant. I was angry at myself. Um, I took full blame for everything and just wanted to not be here. Um, and I was alone, you know, I mean, I had a few friends that would come around and were, were good. I had one friend that really stuck by me. Um, but for the most part, I kind of just felt like I was just going through the motions of life and trying to ignore it as much as possible. Um, and it was, yeah, it was, it was awful. I mean, it was, I truly wouldn't wish any of this experience on anyone else. It's, it was awful and barbaric and it, it really did take me uh, 10 years, if not more to like, forgive myself on any level and, and move on and live a life. Cause I just didn't think I, I deserved it after everything. Um, and like I said, now I can look back and say, you know, I was a child, but at the time, you know, I, I really did take the sole brunt of this. Um, and I wish I wouldn't have, but, you know, I think especially because when we talk about abortion and reproductive health, and I think it is, it is more open now, stories like mine don't get told that much. Um, I think that a lot of times, you know, the talking point of, you know, just give the baby up. It's super simple, you know, is the only one that exists. And so I'm a, I'm a proud advocate for abortion. I think abortion is essential. Um, I, you know, always will advocate. So there won't be more of my story in the world. Um, and, you know, I think it's important to have these conversations because it's the myth. It's a myth that you just give the baby up. Maybe, maybe for some people, and that would be excellent, but I, it's not, it's never that simple. So, yeah.
I mean, Planned Parenthood was very helpful for getting me care, um, especially like going on, <clears throat> sorry, going on so much later. Um, so when I found out I was pregnant, obviously I was at Planned Parenthood and they immediately were like, we're going to bring a midwife in. She's going to talk to you about all of these options. Um, so they were very helpful with that. Um, and I ended up staying with my care through them. Uh, and then in terms of resources though, I mean, I, I wasn't able to really fully understand, like, I mean, this was 2007, 2008. Um, but I wasn't able to tap into things like food stamps. I wasn't able to tap into things like the Medicaid, I ended up getting Medicaid because like the hospital helped me get it after birth because I had a really rough birth experience um, with that baby. Um, but it took like getting a lot of help and, and it would, there were a lot of barriers. I mean, not having a car, having an intermittent cell phone, like I would have it sometimes and ha not have it other times because I had to like pay for it as I could because um, I was earning minimum wage and I you know, I had to cut down my hours, the more pregnant I got. So, you know, um, those resources didn't really exist. I never grew up particularly religious. So I didn't have like, I think some folks get connected through the church to stuff. Um, I will say there were a lot of like community members, like, you know, my friends and a few others that would like, you know, put together like maternity clothes and stuff when I got to the point where I just like, couldn't wear other clothes. Um, but I was really on my own for so much of this. Um, it was just, I, I didn't know how to navigate those systems and I didn't have anybody on my side that could even tell me to do so, you know, even like saying, oh, you can get food stamps. You know, I just assumed because I had a job that I, that I wouldn't qualify. Um, and there were a lot of things where I think if I would have had people in my life advocating for me, it would have gone a lot differently, but, um, yeah, I just didn't know. So it was, it was really, it was rough. It was very rough. So I went into labor early and I remember wheeling in and I, I carried the baby, like I always cared, carried them back. Like, so I didn't look super duper pregnant. Like I never looked about to pop even with my later pregnancies. And the woman told me, oh, you're not in labor. Just come back and, and whatever. And I was like, I'm either in labor or I'm dying. So you need to figure out which one this is. Um, and so, yeah, I, um, you know, I, I had not had the time or resources to do birthing classes. I didn't know how to advocate for myself. I didn't even know what I advocate for. Um, and I ended up getting a, um, emergency C-section after pushing for a while. Um, and it was deeply traumatic. Uh, I did not know how to take care of myself at all. Um, I was on a lot of drugs and I just during that experience, cause they give you pain medicine. Uh, and I, yeah, I, I was, I was a mess and, you know, so the months leading up to birth, the only support I really got was from, from a lot of folks in my life that were saying, well, you know, you should keep this baby, you know, why don't you keep this baby? You'll grow to love this baby. This is how you feel in this moment because you're young but you can keep this baby if you want to. And while I appreciate folks who have that experience and are young mothers, because I, I see them and they're thriving and that's excellent. That was never my journey and, and never who I could be. But when I was on a lot of medicine and all alone in this hospital, a nurse came up and said, I know that on your sheet that it says not to hand you this baby, but I think you should just hold him. And I think you should see if you feel anything because you can always take the baby home. And if you don't want to be a mom after a few weeks, you can give the baby back. And I was all alone and didn't, and was scared. You know, I, I, I was scared in that hospital. I didn't have people with me. I was, I was a baby, you know, holding a baby. Um, and I didn't, I remember holding the baby and not, not feeling anything and feeling worse because I didn't feel that connection that, that she said, see, now you're looking at his eyes and don't you feel differently? And, and I didn't, and I felt like a monster when I didn't. Um, and I think that now I can see that what she did was highly inappropriate. You know, now in retrospect, I can see that of course I wouldn't have feelings for this baby that I never planned on taking. Um, and if I did, that'd be fine, but I didn't. Um, and so 
you know, the nurse told me, well, you know, you can take the baby, baby home. And if it doesn't work out, you can always, you know, here's your options and just really consider this. And, you know, I only had the support network around me that was very pro that notion. And so I ended up taking the baby home for a few weeks. Um, and it was the worst mistake of my life. Um, I ended up with awful postpartum depression. Um, and you know, it developed over, over the span of a few weeks, my C-section got reinfected and I couldn't walk. And I had to have this nurse that would come and help me with my wound care. And it was, I remember like begging her to stay because I was so lonely with this baby and it was awful. And I felt like a monster. You know, I felt like this is what I deserved because of this scenario. I'm oh, sorry to cry. Um, but yeah, I mean, I wish I could go back in time and do things differently, obviously, but, um, you know, I remember it got so bad that it got so bad that, uh, you know, I, I, I definitely, (laughs) I remember I went to the mental hospital and I didn't have insurance because the Medicaid that was covering me cuts off after three weeks after postpartum. And I told them, you know, I want to kill myself and I have this baby and I might hurt myself or the baby. And they just told me this is baby blues and this is what it's like. And, you know, you're probably just going to have to, um, you know, tough it out we can give you antidepressants. That's all we can do for you. And it was awful. You know, I just felt like, what's the point? Um, and I ended up, uh, doing the right thing, I think. And I, you know, grappled back and forth, but I ended up giving the baby up, um, because I knew, you know, this is not, this is not okay for anybody, let alone this human being that's now in this absolute mess. Um, and, you know, uh, I think that a lot of times, you know, people ask me, like, if you could go back and do anything, what would you do? And I would have had an abortion, you know, I, this is, this is the real life. Like that's traumatic for everyone involved and that's not fair. There's no dignity in, in what happened to me. You know, I remember like, I think the worst moment of my life by far was just being alone in a house with a newborn baby I had a C-section. I couldn't walk. I had to crawl across my living room floor and I was 18 doing this, you know, to get a diaper. Cause he was crying. Cause he had a wet diaper. I'd never even changed a diaper before that. And so, you know, um, yeah, I think that it's just not as simple as people say, you know, they'll, they'll just say, Oh, give the baby up, but they don't, they don't talk about the pressure to keep the baby, the pressure to become a mother, um, the pressure to like tough it out. Um, and then, you know, I had to deal with the repercussions of that decision that I made in the hospital. I had to deal with the repercussions of what does society think about a person that can't hack it as a, as a mom that, that says, I can't do this. Cause some people will say, well, of course you did the right thing. And I, now I know that, but like a lot of people didn't. Um, and I, I barely survived that scenario. Um, and I'm so grateful that I did, but it, it really, it almost killed me. Um, for sure. I like without a doubt. And I, so I, yeah, I think women should have always have the right to choose. And I think that if we're going to talk about, well, abort, uh, you know, adoption would be our only option, what that really means for people. Cause my story and what happened to me, this shouldn't happen to people. There was no dignity in that. It took me a decade to recover. And Lord knows what could have happened. You know, I I really do think it's a miracle that I survived that. Um, And I don't think it's talked about enough. So I had gotten back from the, from begging for help at this psychiatric urgent care. um, And I just realized that help wasn't coming. You know, I think that I thought that the people that had rallied around me, the people that had said, we'll just, you know, see if you like this baby and we'll help you out. Um, you know, I, I think that I had thought in my head that there would be a lot more community behind that and assistance. And, and there was not, it was just me. Um, and so I think when I realized like I'm alone in this, I have no resources, 
you know, I barely have, I mean, at the time I had no income because I didn't have maternity leave and I was just, I had saved enough to pay the rent, you know, like I, there was no food for me. The baby had formula. Cause I didn't know the first thing about breastfeeding, you know, like I can't, I, I cannot explain to you how little I knew about what a baby would need. Um, so I, I just realized I'm like, I don't have a, a plan. I'm, and I wanted to, you know, I just thought very, very bluntly, I thought like, well, if I'm going to, if I'm going to kill myself, this baby shouldn't be in the house because what if they don't find me? I mean, that was a real thing at 18. And so when I, I think when I realized that I, you know, I, I realized that this just couldn't happen. This couldn't go on, you know, and I, um, I called a friend and, you know, just said, this needs to happen now. I, I can't do it. And I remember, you know, they, they asked me, they're like, you know, this, this will be it. If you do this, this will be it. And I was like, oh, I know, like, I, I'm never going back to this. Um, and I truly, you know, um, yeah, I'm grateful. I'm really grateful for my clarity that I could do that. You know, I think that, had it gotten worse or, or had I maybe not started those antidepressants, I have no idea. I have no idea what it would have ended up being like, you know, I, the postpartum depression for myself, which I didn't even know was a thing because I had no preparation for being pregnant, you know, and they hand you like a packet of papers and they're like, read through this. And then, you know, you're 18 and you know, everything, so you don't need it. Um, but yeah, so I think that I realized to myself, there's no money, there's no help, there's no one coming to help me. The next right thing is to get out of the way. I can't be the person that raises this baby. I don't want to be the person that raises this baby. And I think to be a parent, not that you always have to want it, but it sure does help. You know, now I remember when we, when I got married, I was so afraid to get pregnant. I was so afraid for, to have a baby. You know, I remember talking with my partner and like explaining the situation and his compassion. I was really moved by, um, but you know, it stuck with me for a long time. I was, I was very scared to give birth again. And I even had like, I, I remember, especially around postpartum depression, I had like five friends and I'm like, you need to check in with me every day and make sure I'm like doing this and, and, you know, make sure I'm like not lying and really push me to make sure I'm okay. But like, I, you know, I was traumatized because when I, when I finally stopped, you know, I, we, I got to the hallucination aspect of postpartum and I had already given the baby up. So that's why I'm really grateful that whatever clarity I had helped me do that before that. But, um, you know, it eventually got better, but it really, it took a toll. Um, and one that for a long time I hid, you know, I didn't tell anybody, you know, I just thought, you know, it's better if no one knows this. Um, cause it's, it's an awful, rough, horrible conversation to have, you know, it's not like it comes up in passing, but on the other hand, like, I don't, I'm not going to hide this story anymore because this is what can happen. This is the reality if we don't have systems where people can get abortion, if abortions, and if we don't have systems where people can get birth control, things like this happen. That's the reality. You know, even with all the technology we have, I'm sure I'm not alone in this story. So it took me, it took me probably 10 years to like fully start to feel, I think for like the first five years, I just drank and, you know, just like try to numb myself. Um, I, just partied all the time. And I remember feeling like I'm just going to really be 18 for a long time. Um, and then I, yeah, I ended up, um, working, uh, in coffee for, for a while longer. And then I met my partner and he was the first person I just felt safe around. Like I told him my full story and he it was the first time I realized like, Oh, maybe this wasn't a hundred percent, you know, maybe there were systems that made this whole thing a lot worse for me. Um, and then, you know, I, I started to get involved. I went back to school cause I was a high school dropout. I went back to college and I ended up being really drawn towards public policy because when I started to look at 
you know, the lack of transit, the lack of a living wage, all those things that contributed to this situation, I realized public policy is where I could change those things. Um, and it really helped me evaluate, you know, like, of course, I had a huge part to do with this and everyone who was involved did. But I think that, you know, on the other hand, too, it's like I can make those systems better. So if somebody is in that situation, at least they can have X, Y, Z, you know, at least they can have access to food stamps or, you know, we can make these processes easier or we can just have you know, people really aware of the fact that you can get birth control by the mail, you know, stuff, stuff like that. I'm really passionate about now. Um, and the main thing that made me start speaking out, you know, was it was a while before, um, the Roe decision got leaked, but when, when, um, when a Supreme court justice went up and said, you know, with, with abortion, people can always choose adoption. You can adopt the baby and go back to college, go back to your life. Um, and I just, I was enraged because it's, it's not like that. It takes decades for some, you know, and even people with better stories than mine, there is a toll that happens. And also birth right now in America is dangerous. You know, I mean, I survived those C-sections at 18, but you know, uh, I still had an infected wound that had to get wound care. I didn't know what I was doing, you know, and now I look back and if I would have known more about birth, it what might've been different, but you know, um, it's, it's inherently dangerous to give birth. And I think that also like anytime anyone in power is saying very flippant things, like you can just do this and walk away and go back to your career. I just, it just makes, it just makes me angry. You know, I feel like it, it triggers that 18 year old that was going through that experience. And it's like, how could you say that? I mean, maybe if you have the economic resources, but if you're poor, like I was then, um, that was not my reality. Um, and how I wish it would have been because, you know, maybe it'd be completely different, but it wasn't, it wasn't my scenario when I found out I was pregnant, we actually looked into like, okay, can we go to another state or Canada? Cause I'm in Michigan, uh, and maybe get a procedure. But the reality was that traveling, it was not in the cards. You know, I was being paid seven twenty five an hour. My rent was $500 a month. And then just any cost of living on top of that, I didn't have a car. Um, and there was no easy way to get there. So, you know, it's, it's not, it's not simple. And the minimum wage has not increased since that year. So in a lot of States, there are still people that are not going to be able to do interstate travel, especially now with travel costs up, but it's not, it's not as simple as hopping on a plane or hopping in a car and going across state lines. It's okay. If I get there and get the procedure, do I need to spend the night somewhere? Okay. That's the cost of a hotel or the cost of a flight or getting across the border, maybe I need a passport, um, which I did not have at 18. Um, and so it's never as simple and it's never as accessible. Uh, you know, I think that, that the idea of crossing a state line, I'm sure if I had the resources, I would have jumped on it for sure, but I did not even closely have those resources. So, yeah. When I gave birth after everything with my husband, I, I, it was just night and day. I remember like the whole, like finding out we were excited. Um, I found out early because I knew what it's like when you actually get pregnant. Like I actually knew the signs. Um, and yeah, it's, it's night and day. And I think, you know, there's always a question of like, would, would you regret it? Would you go back? You know, is, would you ever reconnect? And the answer is no, I wasn't that baby's mother. I never was. Um, and I don't think it could ever really be the, the same. You know, when I, when I held my son, I knew what that nurse in that room was talking about. When I held my son for the first time with my husband, I thought this is what she meant. This is what, the connection that she was talking about. And this is what she was worried I was going to miss. But what she didn't know is that I never felt that for that baby. And I never could have, I was setting myself up for something that I couldn't feel. And so, 
you know, um, I joke that my husband is like the Disney dad, um, when he's, he like, you know, he's just a really great father. And I just remember feeling really afraid and even apprehensive in, in dating later in life. Um, cause I didn't want kids unless I felt like that person was just incredible. Um, and he is, and I love being a mother more than anything. It's the best choice I've ever made. Um, but it definitely is a choice and it's completely different when you have some resources to put behind your pregnancy. You have some awareness of that pregnancy. You're with somebody that can help you with that baby. I mean, single parents, like they can, you know, I mean, I just, I, I have all the, the admiration in the world. I just, I knew after my experience being a single parent would really be a scary thing for me. So, um, I avoided that, but yeah, I think in terms of regret, I have none because I was never that baby's mom and that, that pregnancy really, I, I you know, I, I feel, I, I feel like it just wasn't, it, w- it wasn't supposed to happen. You know, I mean, I, I wish it could have been different, you know, and I, I wish everyone the best, but you know, I, I wish that situation would have been a lot different. Um, but I am grateful that now, you know, I have these two amazing children that I just love to death. Um, but I chose, you know, it was nice. We got, I got to choose to be a mom. It wasn't forced on me in any way, you know, it was the option. It was not, you know, I didn't find out randomly one day and was all alone, you know, so it's just a very different situation. But yeah, in terms of my parents later on, um, you know, my, my parents ended up, so they were very supportive of the adoption process, um, and, and were really good about that. I think that they really struggled with me taking the baby home and they were furious about that and they were right about that. Um, but they were very supportive after the fact, um, and we've repaired our relationship over the years. Like it took a while, but now it's like, we're, we're good. You know, I, I think that, you know, we've had some really honest conversations about what it meant when I was alone experiencing that and like their fears and a lot of stuff that happened to them. Cause you know, that's a really scary thing. And I think people react differently in cases of fear. And unfortunately they ran away instead of pulling near. Um, but yeah, we were, it took us a long time to work on a relationship, but you know, it's like now they're like, my dad is probably number one grandpa, like, you know, loves being a grandparent. Um, but yeah, he's, he's very supportive of that decision. In fact, I remember the year afterwards on mother's day, he like brought me flowers and was like, you know, you made the right choice. And yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Dating after this. I mean, so for years I wouldn't date anybody cause I didn't want to get close. I was very like, you know, I just didn't want to, I wanted to be alone. I knew that I, at that time I was sure I didn't want ever want kids. So, you know, I was like, I'm not getting in a serious relationship. I just kind of wanted to like be alone, um, in the world. And I felt like that's what I deserved too. I think like, I really thought, okay, I did this horrible thing and I deserve to be alone forever um, and miserable. Uh, And, you know, over time, I kind of started to see those systems, but I also just started to forgive myself. You know, I think time helps us understand that like at 18, you're not an adult, even if you're sure that you are, you are not. Um, And so I think I was able to kind of give myself some grace. And when I met my husband, you know, uh, we had some mutual friends, he built parade floats. So I just thought that was so cool. I was like, I want to know what that's about. (laughs) Um, and it took a solid year of us, like being like very casual. And I told him, I was like, I don't do serious relationships, like blah, blah, blah. And he was like, okay, but he was, he waited for me, you know, he never pressured me. He was just like, I really care about you and love you as a person. Um, and I'm he, I, I just really love you. Um, and he gave me the space that I needed to, to appreciate that he was, that that was a real thing that could happen for me. 
um, which I'm so grateful for because yeah, it took me like a solid year of us just me being like, no, we're casual. Like, you know, before I was like, okay, you're my boyfriend. Uh, and you know, we adopted this pug named Petunia and I thought at the time I was like, I'm going to rehab this pug. Cause it was, it was like a rescue. It was a, she was a mess. Um, and she loved only Chris. She likes, she tolerates me now, but she never like warmed up to me. But that was really like when I realized that I could have kids with him was just watching him be like so kind and patient and loving towards this like creature that was just like, you know, she couldn't walk up and down stairs. She ate off a rag, like, you know, just, just weird dog stuff. But I just remember thinking like, okay, this is the kind of person I can have a baby with because he's going to go to any length. Um, and is just genuinely a really good person. Um, and yeah, so I, I feel like I, I really lucked out in meeting somebody like that. Um, but yeah, I mean, when I was dating before him, I just, I just didn't think I was worthy of love. You know, I really didn't, I didn't think that that was going to be a thing for me. And, you know, I just kind of thought, I would drift through life alone and that that's what I deserve to is to be alone, you know, um, cause I had lived in intense fear of being pregnant. So, you know, I, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, it's, uh, it took a while, but we got there. But yeah. Um, so in Michigan right now, they just, they had a judge repeal the, or say basically they, that they would not uphold the abortion ban if Roe is overturned. Um, I mostly, I don't know if I feel re-traumatized, but I do with everything happening. Like, I don't think it makes me walk through that again, but it makes me angry. I feel like this is the first time in a long time with this situation where, you know, I, I try to like, there's a saying that's like practice radical empathy. And I do in my job, I do a lot of, um, community organizing. And a lot of that is like deep root, the, like the deep canvassing. And so you try to like understand other people's perspective and then work on an issue from that like shared viewpoint. And I find myself now, especially around like abortion and access to abortion, having a really hard time doing that because my fuse for people who, you know, are saying things like, you know, they can just give the baby up and, oh, well, your situation is rare. And I know it's not rare. I know I'm not the only one that's ever experienced this. I think that I'm one of the cell, the few people that maybe publicly talks about it because it's a really rough thing to talk about it. But, you know, um, I, it's hard for me to have those conversations, but mostly right now I feel angry because I don't want what happened to me to happen to anyone else it wasn't okay. And it will never be okay. Um, and I really just want people to have a chance at a future where they decide when they get pregnant, how they get pregnant. And that's it. You know, I, it's, I was, I was talking to somebody and they're like, well, what would be your compromise? You know, what's the compromise between things? And I, I think there already is a compromise. The compromise is if you want an abortion, you can get one. If you don't want an abortion, then don't get one that's the compromise already beyond that. There's no conversation, you know, um, and carrying a child to term it, it, there is a physical, spiritual, mental consequence to that. And if you, if you want to ignore that, that's on you, but I know the lived experience of that, you know, I mean, both my children later in life after, you know, a decade had passed, I still had to have two C-sections because of those earlier situations with that child that I had to give birth to at 18, you know? Um, and so, you know, there are long-term physical consequences for that. Um, and it took me a long time to heal both times because I was so torn up from that birth. You know, um, they basically, they, the, when a C-section gets infected, they have to just reopen it and let it close. And there's a ton of scar tissue. And so you just can't give, you know, like it's just, it's giving a birth after that is, is incredibly complicated and it's not the end of the world. It's not, it's not a big deal, but it is like physically the healing time is a lot longer, you know, um, and it's scarier, it's higher risk inherently. So, um, these are not things that happen. And then we walk away, 
you know, and we, we can't pretend like it is. I just, I, I'm really tired of pretending like, you know, it's just, we, we just give birth and walk away. I don't know whose existence that is. I give them props. Like if that's really what's happening for you, that's incredible. It's not for me. So I don't know. Yeah. If somebody came to me and they were pregnant and they were in that early stage where they can get an abortion, I would just talk about the harsh realities. You know, I think that, um, you know, if you, if you were, especially a person like myself at that age, where you're 18, you're working for minimum wage, you don't have a car. Um, and maybe you want to do things like return to school eventually, or, you know, uh, just live your life. However, you want to live it on your terms. Those options are gone if you have a child. Um, and I would say that, um, the adoption process is always open, but just know that you're going to face a lot of folks that are going to push back hard on that, have a plan if that's what you want. And ultimately that being a mother and giving birth will be there. This isn't the only time that you're ever going to get pregnant for most people. And you will have a chance later to give birth. You know, I think that, um, yeah, I, you know, just, just really think about how this will change the fabric of your reality. So is that something you're willing to have happen? And if it's not, then getting an abortion is the right thing to do because it's okay to not want to be a mom when you're young or when you're older or ever. It's okay to not want to be a parent when you're young or when you're older or whenever. I think that that's a choice that we have to make and it's a personal choice, but just realizing you know, what, what your world will look like, at least for a, a, a while is, is really important to consider. Um, and, you know, always I support people's choices, you know, that's, that's my main thing. It's, it's people's choice. And I will always find people, the resources and help and whatever I, way that I can do, but just really step back and consider what this will do, what, how small your world will get for a while. And when you're, when you're ready, it's a beautiful thing, you know, that, that those first few weeks with your child and you're cocooned, you know, and you're, you're just really in awe of them. It's, it's really wonderful. But if you're not in that situation, it can be really nightmarish and just have a plan. And yeah, I just, you know, I think the main thing is, you know, I support people's choice, but just consider what, what the reality of it. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm more than glad to talk about it. If it means that people will really consider what we're asking. Cause I think my main thing is like, what are we actually asking people to do? You know, um, birth for most people in America is inherently risky and scary and we don't talk about it. And then we're like, I can't believe people don't want to give birth. It's very odd.